In this video, I'm going to show you how to trace handwriting so that you can take it and engrave it on an item such as this cutting board that I made. I took my grandmother's handwritten famous banana pudding recipe, which was actually on two sides of an index card, and engraved it onto this cutting board. Um, I'll show you how to do it in Silhouette Studio first because that's my preferred method and then at the end of the video I'll show you how to trace items using the camera on your Glowforge and you'll see why that's not the method that I usually use. So let's get started. So the first thing I did was go to my scanner and scan my recipe cards onto a SD card and then I've loaded my SD card into my laptop. So I've saved the recipe files onto my desktop so I'm going to go to file open and find both of those and push OK to upload them into Silhouette Studio. And you'll notice that it's going to put it on two new tabs so I'm going to click on one of them and just paste it onto the same page as the other. So now we have both the front and back side of the index card that my grandmother's recipe was written on. And now I need to trace this handwriting. So we go to the right hand panel and click on this butterfly icon that brings up the trace panel. And now you click on select trace area and you'll want to draw a box. And you start to see some of these yellow areas pop up, but you'll need to adjust your threshold meter here so that the words begin to fill in because whatever is yellow is what's gonna get traced. So you see if we go too far up, it starts to cover everything and you start to pick up the lines on the index card. So I really just want to get it where the letters look pretty full, but it doesn't pick up the lines of the index card and you can either slide it with your mouse or if you want to make finer adjustments go and click it up step by step. So right here about 88% looks good to me um, and then I'll click on this trace button down here. And what that has done is basically made a trace copy of the words on your index card. So I'm going to fill this in with black so that we can have a better idea of how the trace looks. And I'm also going to delete the red outline. I just don't like having it there. And also in this video I've gone back to using version 4.3 if it looks a little different from previous videos. So this looks like it got a really good trace. Um, you can see that there are some of these little extra dot areas. So you can say release compound path and that's going to turn all of your letters and little dots into separate items now. So if you would want to, uh, you can go through and clean up your design a little bit by selecting those and deleting them. It just depends on how clean you want it to look, but honestly I don't think a few dots here and there are going to ruin your image at all but I just wanted to give that tip in case you wanted to go through. So once you're done with that to make it normal again, you'll just select it all and right click and save make compound path. And now we're back to normal. So I want to also trace my other one. So again, you're gonna to go to the butterfly icon, click on select trace area and then draw a box around the words that you want to trace and then adjust your threshold and then hit your trace button. And again, I like to fill it in with black because you definitely see what got traced a lot better and I'll turn off the red outline. So let's zoom in here and see what we came up with. So I don't want this bottom line here, so I'm going to do the release compound path and clean it up just a little bit. 
And this is really simple to do. Um, just to click on some of these dots, you can see it's not taking me very much time at all. And also, if you can't see maybe where some dots are that you want to remove, what I like to do is to go ahead and start tracing some of it because then the boxes will kind of point out where all those little extra artifacts are and that just makes it easier to find them. So this one right here I may not have even noticed but once the box is around it I see oh I can go in and just delete that to clean it up some. Make sure that you're not erasing any of your dots for your eyes though. That could be very common or your commas they may look like something that you don't need but you definitely want to keep those in there. So that's clean enough for me. So I'm going to highlight it all again, right click and say make compound path and we're back to normal. So also for my project, since this was the front side and the back side of an index card, um, this is an easier method to use because now you can control, you know, how you want it to put together. So. Before it was in two pieces and now if I wanted I can just move this up here and make it all into one piece. And if you wanted to do further customization you could really just like select some of your words um, and move those around if you wanted to. Highlight, select, delete, anything that you want so that the words fit together. Um, because I've done other projects where I was fitting it on something that was smaller and I just needed to um, move the words around so that it would fit better on the item. Okay. And again, go ahead and remake this a compound path. Now you can go ahead and delete your originals off of the screen. And if you measured your cutting board or whatever you're going to be putting your handwritten items on, then I would recommend to go ahead and make it that size while you're in Silhouette Studio. Just because, again, it's a lot easier to change the size of something while you're in this program versus the Glowforge. You don't have much option for how to resize in there. So when you're satisfied with the size and how everything's arranged, you can click on File, Save As, and I'll save it as Recipe. And since we're going to be engraving this, you could save it as a different file type, but I always like to just go ahead and save it as SVG still. And hit OK. So now that's done in Silhouette Studio, we'll head over to the Glowforge app. Now in your Glowforge site, you can hit the upload button, find your file and hit open. And then it will load our design into our Glowforge space. So here is the recipe and you can see my cutting board is in the bottom of my Glowforge. And I have removed my crumb tray for this because the uh, cutting board thickness is almost at that 0.5 mark. And since I made the video on how to use the Glowforge without uh, the crumb, crumb tray in there, there have been some updates and some new things that I've learned um, that I would like to share to make it easier. No math involved at all. Just real quick that... If you don't have your crumb tray in, if your material height is 1.4 inches, you can put it directly on the floor of the Glowforge. If the material thickness is less than 1.4, then you need to put something under it again to raise it up to 1.4, but you still need it to be under 2 inches. Now that was pretty much the same as my previous video, but the difference now is instead of doing the math and calculating, you can hit this gear icon and do set focus and click um, on your item. And the Glowforge will actually uh, automatically calculate that material height now. So um, I'll insert a quick little video of what it does in the machine 
but it basically sends a laser beam down so that it calculates the distance between your material and the print head, which is pretty cool. So that's an update that Glowforge has added that makes it a lot easier to use thick materials without your crumb tray in. So the next thing you want to do is to click on your design over here and hit engrave. And since we're not using a proof grade material this time, I'm going to manually set my settings. And another upgrade that Glowforge just rolled out, like this is the first time that I've logged in and seen that my speed got upgraded. And you can see that it says beta here. Uh, the max speed for the pros used to be only 1000. And now for some engravings, their uh, speed has increased up to 4000. So I'm pretty excited to finally get that upgrade and test that out. But when I originally made this cutting board, I did it with a speed of 1000 and a power of 90. And I don't want to uh, test it with a 4000 speed right now on a larger project just because I haven't used it yet. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Another quick tip I found out is that if you hold down the shift button while you're rotating your image, then it will send it to that 90 degrees perfectly for you. So once you have this item where you want it, then you would hit the print button and then hit the button on your Glowforge as well. And this is a project that I've already completed, so unfortunately I didn't take a video at the time of it actually engraving this cutting board. But the next thing I want to show you is how it would look if you tried to use the trace feature um, using the Glowforge's camera. Now with the recipe placed in my Glowforge, I'll hit the trace button. And you can now see that um, index card sitting on the crumb tray in my Glowforge. So the first step it says is to drag a square around the artwork you want to trace. And then you want to click on the white spaces that you want to remove. So it'll highlight all of your words in this purplish color. And then you can say place artwork. And at that time you can see the trace job that it's done. And then you would go in and take your uh, index card out and put your cutting board back in. But you can see here that the quality of the trace is not near the quality that the Silhouette Studio gave us. Um, it's very difficult to read this and this is why it's not my preferred method here where I have already cleaned my camera. Um, it just didn't get a clear trace and also how we were moving words and removing dots and all that in Silhouette Studio, you're only able to resize this. There's no further editing that you can do here. So uh, just wanted to show what that option is on the Glowforge, but again, it's much better to do it with the Silhouette Studio software. Thanks for watching, and as always, if you know a better way to do something, please leave me a comment and let me know. As you can tell, I'm learning a lot more as I continue to use my Glowforge, and also they're making a lot of system changes and improving the process as well. Um, so yes, please always let me know if you have an idea or just a question or want me to try something, and please hit the subscribe button so you can see my future videos. And if you're here watching this video trying to learn all you can before you buy your Glowforge, please consider using my referral link that's in the description. You'll save when you buy any of the models of the Glowforge, and I'll get the same in materials so that I can keep creating and making videos.